All right, good afternoon, Kellen. Are you ready to learn how to play the cello? Yes! It is going to be fantastic, but we've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. Um, we're gonna start by going over some of the important parts of the cello, which we have right here. So going from the top, we've got the scroll, we've got the pegs which are used for major tuning issues. Uh, I say major because there's another uh, part of the cello that we use for minor adjustments. Um, this is the fingerboard where you'll change the notes of the strings. Uh, we've got the bridge over here that allows the strings to resonate. Um, here we've got the uh, fine tuners. Uh, this is what I was talking about with minor adjustments. If you're just a little bit um, out of tune, you'll adjust these to change the pitch. Uh, we've got the tailpiece, and here we have the end pin, which we will be adjusting in just a moment. Um, before we get too much further, I'm also going to introduce to you the bow. We will be using this at some point. Um, we have the tip, we have the stick, we have the bow hairs. Now, do you know what the bow hairs are made out of? Horse hair. Yeah. Horse hair, right. Um, they're pretty delicate, so the less you touch them, the better. Um, we've got the frog, and this little dot here, we call that the eye of the frog. Um, the ferrule is this little end point here. Mm -hmm. And we've got the adjusting screw, which is used to tighten and loosen the bow hairs. Alright, so let's get into a proper posture before we actually pick up the cello. So what I want you to do, Callan, I want you to sort of slump in your chair. Pretend, we're going to pretend that we're marionette puppets. So there's a string attached to our head, and the puppeteer is just going to pull us up. Now the string should be pointing straight up, nice and tall, shoulders relaxed. All right, um, now before I give you the cello, um, your feet are going to be flat on the floor as much as possible, so you might have to scoot a little forward, and you want your legs apart. Great. All right, so I'm going to show you how to hold the cello really quickly, and then I'll hand it off to you. So you'll have to adjust the end pin to your height. For me, I'm a average height, so um, I usually go all the way out, um, but I adjust it as needed. With your legs apart, you're going to rest the body of the cello in between the legs. You can tilt it a little bit if you need to um, for comfort's sake. The right shoulder of the cello is going to rest on my chest. And now you'll notice the pegs are just behind my left ear. So I've given you the rock stop for a better positioning. So go ahead and get the cello into a comfortable position and adjust the end pin if you need to. I would push the end pin in a little. So yeah, just pick it up. There's a little screw there. You loosen that. Yep, just like that. I think it's it's not bad. That'll work. All right. Um, you might want to. Turn the cello a little bit more that way. Yeah, like that. There you go. Okay, so now that we've got the cello in your hands, let's learn the names of the strings. So we're going to start by pizzicato. Um, you won't be using your left hand for now. Your left hand can just be used to support the instrument. With your right hand, you're going to have your right thumb on the side of the fingerboard here, and you'll pluck with your pointer finger. So the lowest string, which you're just about to pluck, that is the C string. Go ahead and pluck that a few times. All right, now if you go to the next string over, that's our G string. Go to the next one over, that is our D string. And the highest string is the A string. Now, what do you notice about the intervals of the strings? We've got a C to a G. Oh, fifth. It's a fifth. 
g to d is a fifth, and d to a is also a fifth. So all the strings are a perfect fifth apart, which is helpful, um, especially for scale patterns. We won't go over scales, but it's just something to know. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to name uh, one of the notes of the, the, the string names, and you pluck that. So let's start with C. Good. Uh, let's do A. Good. Uh, D string. And the G string. Good. So now we know the names of the strings. I think it's time we read some pitches, though. Um, are you familiar with the bass clef? Yes. I'm not surprised. <laughs> So, something to think about when reading bass clef is the two dots of the bass clef go um, to the either side of this fourth line, that's F. So, that's something easy that you can remember is the line between those dots is F. Um, after that, you know, you go to the line to the space above that, that's G, line above that's A. Um, I know you already know this, but for the sake of this video, I have to teach that to you. So let's start. Um, we're going to keep with the pizzicato, and let's have you play number four, two is a teen. You're going to be using the D and A, which are notes that you have already learned. So one, two, one, two, ready, play. <laughs> Okay, so next we're going to learn a few fingerings. Um, now, we're, for this lesson, you're only going to be using your first finger on your left hand. So, you see the little dot uh, behind the neck? There's mm -hmm. a little like felt thing. That is your thumb placement. That's going to keep the uh, fingerboard secure. Um, now, you also notice the tapes on the fingerboard. Those are the placements of your finger. So your first finger is going to go, it's going to have to stretch all the way up there. Um, you'll notice there's quite a bit of stretch to the next fingerboard. That won't actually be for your second finger, that'll be for your third finger. Oh, not that finger. There you go, oh, that, that finger. Um, yeah, just like that. But for the sake of this, you'll only be using your first finger. So let's have you start, um, we're going to start on the D string. I want you to pluck four Ds and then place the finger down. And when you place that finger down, you'll be playing an E. So start on D. There you go. So let's just go back and forth. D, E, D, E, D. Great. Let's move to the A string now. And same exercise, you'll be playing A, B, A, B. There you go. Great work. Um, if you want to hand the cello over to me, we're going to work on our bow grip. So, I'm going to model the proper bow grip to you first, and if you want, you can kind of practice on a pencil. It's not quite the same thing, mm -hmm. um, but it's something for you to get used to. So, with the bow grip of the cello, I start with the thumb, and thumb is going to go in the ferrule of the frog, like so. With all your other fingers, you just kind of wrap it around. Um, your middle finger can kind of latch onto that thumb in there. You just kind of have to wrap it around. It's, it's, a, it's definitely more awkward of a bow grip than some of the other instruments. Um, you'll notice my fingers here are covering up the eye of the frog. Um, so it'll just take a bit of getting used to. So mm -hmm. let me see how you do with the pencil really fast. With the thumb. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's a very, a very interesting bow grip. Let's switch you over to the bow now.
Good. Now let's see if you can remove that left hand that you're holding it with. You see how it supports. So a little. It's a, it's a very strange feel when you first have to hold it, um, but it's something that you'll get used to. So if you want to hand the bow to me really quickly. Proper bowing technique. So I have the cello here. Um, proper bow grip. I'm just going to start on the D string. You don't need a whole lot of pressure to play uh, with the bow. Um, what you want is you want your elbow to kind of swing out a little bit. That'll allow the cello or the bow to stay in one position. Otherwise, if you're if you're not careful, the bow can start going up here, and you don't get a very good sound. So the key is to keep the bow in the middle. All right, so I'm going to give you the cello first, and then I'll give you the bow. Got it? There you go. All right, once you've got that securely in place, So let's start um, having you play on an open G. There you go. Good. Um, try moving the bow a little bit further down. You want it in between the bridge and the fingerboard. There you go. All right, let's move to the D string now. the A string, you have to angle it a little bit more. There you go. Oops. Good. All right. Um, so we're going to be a little bit, uh, um, what do I want to say, forward moving, and we're going to start working on getting the first finger as well with the bowing. So you're just going to play uh, with quarter notes, it's going to start on D. You're just going to play D, E, D, E. And you're going to move that bow back and forth with the quarter notes. Good. So let's move on. Let's try the A string now. And same exercise, so it'll be A, A, B, A. Great. Alright, so one last play and exercise and then we're almost done. We're going to look at number five. You won't need any fingerings for this, but this will help you get used to uh, changing the, the bow position. So you're going to start on open D and you'll move to A at the right points. At Piero's door in one, two, one, two, ready, play. <laughs> it's, it's definitely a different feeling. Do you want me to uh, model it really quickly? Yeah. That might help. Let's see if I, if I play it first, if that'll help you. So it's a kind of, it's a movement that you really have to get used to. Um, Especially with the with uh, App Hero's door is definitely not the easiest um, piece to be working on bow switching. Um, you have some very uh, not so convenient bow motions that you have to make. But let's give it another go. We might have a problem. Okay, we're gonna finish up. All right, one last time. And one, two, one, two, ready, play. Look at that. 
you're a natural. Um, thank you so much for uh, helping me out with this lesson. I hope you enjoyed learning uh, at least a little bit about how to play the cello. Uh, and you can learn a lot more about how to play cello when you take string tech. Yay! Thank you.